Imagine you're a detective tasked with solving a mystery. You have two groups of clues, ones that lead to the culprit and ones that don't. Your job is to draw a line on a map, separating the clues into these two groups as clearly as possible. This is essentially what a support vector machine does. But instead of clues, it works with data points. And instead of a map, it deals with a multidimensional space. At its core, an SVM is a type of machine learning algorithm that helps computers learn how to classify data into different categories. Picture it like sorting socks. You want all your white socks in one drawer and all your colored socks in another. The SVM helps decide the best way to draw the line that splits these categories apart. Here's a bit more technical detail. SVMs work by finding the hyperplane, or the decision boundary. That's basically a line in 2D, a plane in 3D, and so on, that best separates the data into different classes. The best hyperplane is the one that has the largest margin between the two groups of data points. Think of it like a referee drawing the boundary lines on a sports field so that the players from the two teams stay clearly apart from each other. The wider the boundary, the better, and the clearer the separation. But how does the SVM figure out where to draw this line? It looks at the data points closest to the boundary. These are called support vectors. Imagine you have a bunch of marbles on a flat surface and you want to separate them into two groups using a ruler. You'd place the ruler between the marbles in such a way that it's as far as possible from the nearest marbles on each side. Those nearest marbles are your support vectors. They're crucial because if you moved one of them, the boundary would have to move too. What's even cooler is that SVMs can handle more than just straight lines, more than just a ruler. In the real world, data isn't always nicely separable with a straight line. Sometimes it's all jumbled up. For example, let's say you're sorting apples and oranges, but some apples are green and some oranges are reddish. A straight line might not do the trick. Here's where the SVM gets fancy. It uses something called a kernel trick. Simplistically, this trick involves transforming the data into a higher dimensional space, where it becomes easier to separate with a straight line. Imagine you're sorting colored balls on a flat table. They're all mixed up in such a way that no straight line can separate them perfectly. Now imagine lifting the table's surface into a bowl shape. Suddenly, it becomes much easier to draw a circular line around one group of balls. That's what the kernel trick does. It reshapes the space so that complex data becomes linearly separable in this new, higher dimensional space. SVMs are versatile and powerful. They can be used for classification tasks, like sorting emails into spam or not spam, and regression tasks, like predicting numerical values, like housing prices. They're particularly good for problems where the data has clear margins of separation and are effective even when the number of dimensions, or features, is greater than the number of samples. However, SVMs aren't without their challenges. They can be computationally intensive, especially with large data sets, and they require careful tuning of parameters, like the choice of kernel and the penalty parameter to perform well. But with advances in computing power and optimization techniques, they still remain a go-to tool for many machine learning tasks. Another challenge is that SVMs aiming to maximize the margin between data classes are really sensitive to outliers, which can disproportionately influence the decision boundary. So in summary, a support vector machine is like a smart detective that draws the optimal line or hyperplane to separate data into distinct categories using the closest points, support vectors, to define the boundary. It can handle complex, nonlinear separations by transforming the data into higher dimensions with the kernel trick. While they do require some fine tuning and can be computationally expensive, SVMs are still a great choice for many classification and regression challenges. So the next time you see a neat division of spam and non-spam emails, remember it might be the handiwork of an SVM drawing those lines behind the scenes.